morning, everybody. We're on our way back to pick up our trailer. And uh, when I scaled the trailer, I realized that uh, my the back end of the trailer itself, the trailer axles are pretty heavy. They're sitting at 37,000 pounds. But the front of the trailer that's resting on the truck on my drives, that's only sitting at 30,000 pounds. Now, I was kind of worried that I was going to be overweight, but I am underneath my maximum weight of 80,000 pounds for the U.S. And having the three axles that are 97 inches apart or more, I'm allowed to haul 42,000 pounds on those axles. So it turns out I'm all legal. I don't need to shift any weight around on this trailer, which is awesome. I can just hook up and go. It's the same load that Britt and I picked up in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan last week. We're continuing on with it to Wisconsin. And then from there I got to uh, go down to Northern Indiana to Middlebury, Indiana, pick up some utility trailers and bring them back here for the weekend. I'll probably be back here on Sunday, I'm guessing. Saturday night or Sunday. Depending, because I, I gotta go all the way through Chicago. So we're just gonna go grab our trailer and continue on. I'm really glad that I don't have to adjust the weights because I wasn't too familiar with the triaxle or tridum weights in the US because I've never pulled tridum weight or tridum trailers really in the US but I, I did some research into it this last the last couple of days and yeah as long as you stay underneath your 80,000 pound gross weight you can have 42,000 pounds on the triaxle. I just have to remember to pick up special wheel straps of some sort. Uh, these utility trailers that I'm picking up, they take special tie-down straps that go around the tires, and we have them at the office or at the yard, so I'll, I'll pick those up so I can use them to bring them back here. Otherwise, it's, it is a little bit time-consuming to tie those trailers down because you don't want to damage them at all, right? And you have to have dunnage, so that they have wheel chocks. It's just much easier to grab all that equipment now at the yard and rather than having to buy it on the way down, right? It's a very windy day though, wow. The wind is coming from the north, so it's gonna be pushing us south, that's good. Just be sipping the fuel all the way down. Well, we ended up moving some of the weight forward anyways, just cause, <laughs> It's different state to state what they allow and what they don't allow. So in order to not take risks, we just acted as if that third axle isn't even there on the triaxle trailer. So we uh, moved some of the weight forward. So there's 34,000, under 34,000 on the trailer and on the drives of the truck behind the cab here and under 12 on my steers here. And I believe I'm sitting at about 79,500 pounds. So I'm, I'm pretty heavy, but it's just wood, right? So it's easy to move around. So. Ugh. We got all of this loaded up and ready to go here right now. It's been a windy day, very windy day. So we got like the two up at the front and we took those two from the back here. Those, there was four here, right? So we took it down to two and added those up at the front and that balanced it out just perfectly, see? And we have this, what we call a riser, here at the front. We'll be using that on our next load, so I'll show you then how we use that. Diesel, you ready to go? Ready to go, man? Let's put these fine people up here. Turn this around so you guys can hear me a little bit better. All right, there we go, officially ready to rock and roll. This truck is a little bit dirty, but we'll clean it as we go. We have our pre-trip done, our load is secure. Diesel has his water here, his water dish is clean, but I gotta clean out his food dish before I put food in there for him later. Uh, he gets fed in the morning and the evening. And uh, just tell the people here that we are ready to go. We should get really good fuel economy. Like I said, it's crazy windy outside and all the wind is blowing south. 
that's the way we're going. Man, why does this door never close? Oh, slam, it's so hard for it to close. It's so weird. I've been having problems with this door. I'm gonna get looked at. Open myself in so I don't fall out. Check my phone before I get on the road. We'll be on our way. And it feels great to be back. Always does. Let's see what we're doing right now. Instant fuel economy. Uh, it's still up there a little bit. You just wait till the wind catches our sails and we'll be gone. It is pushing us right now, but I am still just getting up to speed. There we go. Beautiful. Nope, I know better, Mandy. I know a shortcut. Oh, wait, but it is springtime restrictions. Oh, good thing I thought of that. That's okay, I still know a shortcut. It's just a different shortcut. We gotta go down past uh, St. Pierre to uh, Route 23. That takes us across to Morris. Every other road going across to the right, which would be westbound, every other road going across to Highway 75, which takes us down to North Dakota, is limited weight restricted right now to 65% of normal axle weight limits for springtime because our roads suck and we don't want them to suck more. Turn left on Van Road. Nope, we're going to keep going, Mandy. Told you. Why don't you listen to me? Just got into the truck. We're already fighting. Is it all gone already? Is it all gone, Diesel? What? I gave you a treat. I turned around, grabbed the camera, and it was already gone. Well, this bag's actually not been opened yet. Here, you know what? You need to brush your teeth. We're gonna give you one of these little dent bones. There you go, buddy. Brush your teeth. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's the good stuff. Oh. Enjoy it, buddy. Enjoy it. Mom's not here. <laughs> Dental life chews. Sort of helps reduce tartar and buildup. He's going to have to get a teeth cleaning soon at the vet. His breath is beginning to stink pretty bad. We stopped in at the Husky in Morris, which is uncommon for us, because usually we stop at the Flying J, just north of here in St. Agathe. But because of the spring road restrictions, I had to come across to the 75 on the 23. And if you're familiar with the area, this all makes sense. If not, uh, the 23 takes me through here to Morris. Uh, but if the spring restrictions aren't in effect at any other time of the year, I can cross on either like the, the 207, I believe that goes through St. Adolphe, or the 305, which comes into St. Agath. If I take those, then I can stop by at the Flying J. If not, then I gotta stop here. I could have gone to Timmy's across the road, but like I said, I'm sort of like on the outs with them right now. I'm very disappointed in their coffee that it doesn't actually taste like coffee. It sort of tastes like coffee flavored water. It's not strong enough. The dark roast is better, but you definitely have to add a shot of espresso in there just for it to taste like coffee. And then you're starting to get into prices of like Starbucks prices. Oh, these bumps are huge here. Good lord. Wow, you wouldn't want to hit these too fast. Okay, we gotta wait for cars now anyways, because I gotta creep over these. We're gonna get back on the 75 highway here in front of us, and uh, in half an hour or so, we'll be in the United States of America. Bringing them down some good old Canadian wood. Someone in Wisconsin wants some Canadian lumber. It's on the way. a new uh, border patrol officer in there today. I 
Didn't recognize him. I haven't seen him before. And this guy, dude, you're not supposed to stop here. Continue 2.7 kilometers, then take exit 215 on right. Oh. Every time. You know, I wish the Border Patrol would kind of enforce that and kick them out of there and sort of move them along. It bothers me when they park there. It's dangerous because look at that guy. He just walks right out into traffic. And secondly, it is illegal to stop on the side of a freeway, especially when there's a nice truck stop a mile ahead. But whatever. You guys watching this video, I know you guys don't do that because we've talked about it before. Just go up to the next exit and stop there. No need to make yourself uh, an obstacle. So we're in the USA now, we have 1,097 kilometers. Mandy insists on interrupting me all the time. You know, there's coming a day when I'm gonna throw you out. That's right, throw you out like a piece of garbage. Maybe I'll give you away. That's how much you mean to me, Mandy. I already have a woman in my life. I put a ring on her. Can't put a ring on you. So we have 1,090 some kilometers to go. Oh, we're definitely not gonna make it there tonight, but we're gonna see how far we get. We'll drive till we get tired. I'll probably drive to around midnight, another uh, five and a half hours or so. Four and a half hours now. X. I just got some mail from a Maria. It looks like Hamilton, Ontario. Thank you so much for what you sent here. It really means a lot to me. And I'm sure it will mean a lot to Brit as well. It looks like you had sent this around Christmas. And for some reason it just got to us now. So I don't know what, if it got held up somewhere or if it was just a late Christmas greeting. But we did get it. And uh, I, I do appreciate that. I also got this here. I'm going to open it up right now and see what it was. Uh, you did say that your, your mother had passed away recently and I'm so sorry to hear that. So uh, I can't imagine how hard that would be really. I don't even really know how to react because <laughs> I instantly think of my mom and how difficult it would be to lose her. So uh, you had mentioned in there that your mother had passed away this year uh, before Christmas, I believe. And uh, my deepest sympathies to you. I hope you're doing better. It's March already. Uh, so it looks like these letters were supposed to get to us by around Christmas. But uh, I hope things are starting to look up and getting a little easier for you. Let's see what you got in here. It's a bag. It was a bag that was in a box. Oh, this was something different. Okay. This was actually a new adapter. This wasn't part of that. <laughs> For some reason, they had taped your letter to this other parcel. This is a new uh, power adapter for my laptop computer because we broke ours on our last trip. Uh, my computer took a tumble off the shelf there and uh, the power cord broke. This is just a new power cord, not part of your, your letter here. But a Maria. According to the, the address up here in Hamilton, Ontario, I did receive it. And uh, if you've been waiting for confirmation this whole time, I'm so sorry it took this long, but I, I just got it today. So I'm going to put that there and I'll show it to Britt as soon as I get home. If uh, others of you, I always get comments asking what's our mailing address. We don't have a mailing address right now. Uh, if you can get a hold of us, I know I'm a hard guy to reach. That's not on purpose. I apologize. Uh, but I am a hard guy to get a hold of. I've got a lot going on in my life right now, especially, and uh, it's hard to reach me sometimes. But uh, we do have a mailing address that you could use, uh, but you'd have to reach out to us. We still haven't decided whether or not to like release it publicly or not. Uh, but for now, we don't have any public mailing address. So, uh, just so you know. Now, this here is the replacement for our... power cord. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, it's different than my last one. It said it was for the, the same thing. Just a different brand, I guess. Same thing. Let's give it a shot. Let's plug her in. 
So we got a little ways to go tonight yet. We'll be driving into the night. Uh, we'll get at least down to Fargo. I'd like to get down to somewhere near like Alexandria. I think that would be great. But it doesn't look like I'm going to get this lumber delivered tomorrow. Uh, I have until the next day to deliver it if I want to. And that's probably what's going to happen. It took me a little while longer than I wanted to to get going today. Because I had to get all that extra equipment for uh, those trailers, right? Like those wheel straps. I have those wheel straps inside the truck here too. Which I don't like. like take a look at this. I got them like all down here. I don't like having equipment in my truck. I really don't like that, but I don't got any room anywhere else. I have so much equipment hanging off my truck all over the place already that it's, it's just not safe to hang any more off of there. So let's plug this in here. All right, let's give this a test. This is a huge, like, huge adapter. Here, one second. Oh, put this Velcro here I didn't see. Huh? Okay. Put that behind, ah, behind the computer without breaking anything, please. Please. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, get rid of this other one. Because this other one still worked, right? But you sort of had to jimmy it to work properly. And we'll, here, let's turn the screen on for a second here. <laughs> I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing. Here. I'm just trying to... Plug this into the side. See if it'll it'll work. Yep, there you go. Plugged in. Boom. Done. Okay, so we can turn that back off. Hope that doesn't distract us while we're driving. And we can continue down the road. You know, I used to have a, a public mailing address, and it was always sort of like one of my favorite things to read the letters from you guys. A lot of you guys would handwrite letters for us and uh, a lot of you young viewers too would send in like little like artistic work that you did drew a picture of our truck or something and uh, I always really enjoyed that but sometimes it became a little overwhelming too because sometimes I'd be gone for a while I'd come home and there would be a lot of a lot of mail and I would never call it fan mail because I don't I don't like calling you guys fans. I, I refer to you guys as viewers, a viewer mail. You're just a viewer of my channel. I don't think I'm above you. I don't think like I'm like some celebrity or anything like you're watching me. I'm just like you. I just have a camera in my hand and I like to have a one-way conversation. I wish the conversation could go both ways more often, but that's what the comment section is for. So uh, we used to get a lot of viewer mail and sometimes it would become a little bit overwhelming, but I do miss hearing from you guys, like having something tangible in my hand from you, just like this. So Britt and I were actually talking about it just this weekend, actually, that we would like to open up another public address, but we'll, we'll let you know more about that in the future. We need to get going down the road again. We got a long way to go and a decent amount of time to get there. Southbound just well, no? Come on, Diesel, that's a good good song. Doesn't want to be in the video. He's sad. He misses his mom. Diesel, whatever happened to me and you on the road all excited to be together. Now whenever Britt's not here, he's all sad. <laughs> well, Diesel. You wanna know what we forgot? We forgot the mattress, the memory foam mattress. So we got to sleep on these hard things this whole trip. Good thing mom's not with us, eh? Man, she wouldn't like that very much. Yeah, well, that's not a big deal, but uh, the memory foam mattress I put on here, I left at home. I don't know why I store it. Well, I store it in our spare bedroom. I know why, because I don't want dog hair to get into it. And that's the one room where the dogs aren't allowed. But then I forget it because nobody goes in there. The dogs don't go in there and neither do I. So I, I forgot it. That's okay. We've slept on these things before, right, Diesel? One less thing to pull out before we go to bed and one less thing to put away in the morning. So we're uh, in Fargo, North Dakota. Actually, no, we're in Moorhead, Minnesota right now. Same city, different side of the river. Moorhead, Minnesota. We're going to continue on down the road just a little bit yet. We had a great, great trip for fuel economy coming south. Like I thought, that that wind just pushed us. Just I used less fuel to get to Fargo than I do in my pickup truck pulling our camper. And I have like 80,000 pounds gross here. I was getting like 28 liters per 100 kilometers. 
which is really good for this truck. What is that in miles per gallon? I don't know. I don't know. It's good. It's really good. I was really happy with that. So I want to continue a little bit further yet. Uh, we have to fuel up in Alexandria. But other than that, no big plans. Just moseying along. We'll probably stop in uh, Sauk Center, I think, tomorrow. Or maybe somewhere in Wisconsin. And go to the gym. I don't think I'll make it that far tonight. But either way, it's been a good day so far. Good day back on the road. A little bit lonely. Just myself and Diesel after being on the trip with Britt and all the dogs, the whole family on the last trip. But at the same time, it's kind of, it feels really roomy in here. <laughs> Got a lot of space. So. Ah, we're just at the rest area, so let's keep going. Got a long way to go still. Still have 840 kilometers to our destination. This isn't one of my favorite rest areas. I don't really like the way they have the parking set up for the trucks. There's not quite enough room. Especially if it gets full. I mean, once it gets full and you're parked in here and you come in to park or to go through, you can't really get through. You're stuck and you gotta back up. Either way, it's, it's always nice to have a nice civilized rest area like this. Unlike what you'll see across most of Western Canada, you know? Nice, safe restrooms to use that are clean and cleaned daily, more than once. So nice. Warm and heated, not just an outhouse. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Alberta. Come on. And BC. I'm gonna get you guys some real rest areas. One of these years, maybe. Rothsay, Minnesota. Is that how you pronounce it? Rothsay? Rothsay. I'm gonna pull in here for the night. I'm tired. It's after midnight already. Uh, not nearly as far as I would have liked to have gotten, but my body is telling me, Chuck a child! Time to go to sleep, Chuck a child! You know, you gotta listen to it. Where should I park? I'm gonna go around at the back. I don't wanna nose into parking spots anymore, that's the thing. Ever since uh, my batteries went dead on me and I was nosed in and they almost had to pull me out just to get boosted. No more nosing in for me. Too risky. There's a bunch of spots off here to the right but this guy off to the left parked so close that no one can get in there. Well, I guess I could. I could, I guess. But no, I'm gonna go to the back here. Oh no, that guy's got a reefer over there. Hmm. I could nose into this spot right here, but... No, thank you. Look at all these sleeping trucks, eh? That guy's got a reefer. Thank you, that guy's got a reefer. No, thank you. Okay, well, then I'm gonna go park in that other spot back there. <clears throat> right beside that other guy who nosed in, in the back there. You see that driver right there? There's that white freight liner right in front of us now. And then that guy who nosed in, I'm gonna park right between them. Right in there. Put my hazards on so people know I'm doing something. Oh, and just like that, the day is over. And someone's messaging me here. Before they take control of the world's top scientists, Liam. What's going on here? Whoa, hey, I didn't press play on you. What's going on here? Ah, oh, my wife. She says good night and then she loves me. Good timing. I'm going to bed too. I'm going to bed also. Love you. Sleep well. Send. 
There you go, send a little uh, emoji. There you go, just to seal the deal. And that's that. Diesel, are you finally eating your food? I gave you your supper hours ago, man. Go on, eat your food, buddy. Eat your food. You're a good boy. Go on, no, don't take a break because I noticed you're eating. It's okay. I don't judge you. Go on. Go on, eat your food. Oh, I distracted him. <laughs> okay, so 10 hours from this very moment, we will be doing our pre-trip and getting ready to go tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm tired. And it's, it's good because I'm going to go in there, grab some milk. I'm going to chug some milk and then I'm going to go to sleep. And it's going to be glorious. The best. Believe me. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a great night. And I hope you all have a great night too. Thanks for watching me today. I make a new video almost every day. Be great if you subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and we're so close. We're so close. We're less than 10,000 away. So I hope you join our crew here. Hit that little bell beside the subscribe button as well. That means that you'll get a notification when I release a new video so you can keep up with what's going on. Because if you miss one, you're out of the loop. And then you got to catch up. And then that takes twice as long. So if you just watch every day, you always know what's going on. Diesel, hey. Want to say anything? You didn't finish your food. Uh. He's such a picky eater. If Britt's not here, he doesn't like to eat. <laughs> Anyways, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.